sushi with hand roll. Are they allowed to do that? <laughs> hey, hi, hello, Rama boys and girls. It, it's me, your old pal, the host with the most Jackie Spratlin. Welcome to the dessert on your TV dinner, the most splendid, fabulous show on kids' TV. Hello, Rama! Miso, I want miso soup with that. Miso! It's a happy, dappy, dippy, dappy day. A funny, runny, bunny, honey day. Come on, it's time. Get up and chime. It's a happy Hello Rama day. It's Wacky Jackie Spratlin and all his good time friends. Fun comes without a warning, then decides that it won't end. The show is great for Jackie, so happy he could cry. He's doubled his Prozacky, cause the fun just won't die. It's a happy, dappy, dippy, dappy day. A funny, runny, bunny, honey day. Hey, what's that feeling? Your brain is real. Happy Hello Rama Day to keep you today. It's a something, 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 something day. Batten the hatches and don't play with matches. It's a happy hello rock a day. A druid, body fluid, a river runs through it. Ward and Skeezix, Oscar and Felix, slipping and slapping, clowns that say lapping. Polite, then ruder, a zippy's a pruder. Sonic, phonic, romper, stomper, hectric, metric, paid with a grant from Edison Electric. Jackie Spratlin's personal hello rama It's a hap hap happy day. I sing to the little lay. Oh, you can't go wrong if you sing this song. Yeah, it's a hap hap happy day. <laughs> hey, hi, hello, Rama, boys and girls. <laughs> you know, I really, really appreciate you putting me into your VCR today because we're going to take us a, a fast forward trip into the Hello Rama video vault. <laughs> Zowie, it's great that we can't afford that effect. <laughs> anyway, it's just been a real eventful year at WUUW, the, the big woo. -hoo. Who'll ever forget the unexpected hurricane that we had? Or the unexpected forest fire? And the unexpected giant monster! <laughs> But by far the worst was the unexpected cold front that came in. That is to say, our new owner and station manager here at WUUW, the big woo. He's from Irkutsk, the communications center of the world. Frankie, Frankie, is my turn to speak yet? Ilya Morov. Greetings and salutations, my young American friends. I am show producer Ilya Moromets, coming to you live on tape. <laughs> I am knowing you will enjoy this easily assembled, moderately priced clip show. It cost us nothing, and we pass the savings on to you. <laughs> and we at Generico have other tapes for your viewing pressures, like Malinko, lovable engine that was melted down and turned into a cannon. Our own Benny Spit Take. That's Chuck Jackie Spratling. Starring in Terminator-like movie called Arriva Dutchy from the Future, baby. <laughs> and the holiday classic Dracula vs. Santa. <laughs> Unfortunately for me, you can only buy this one right now. But as you Americans say, Larry Bird in your hand, melts in your mouth. Or is it Admiral Bird in hand is worth two in Cape Bush? Ah. Oh well, enjoy your purchase and don't forget to play tape backwards to hear secret subliminal messages. <laughs> Take it away, spit tape! <laughs> Mr. Marmots, everybody! Mr. Marmots. 
So, hey kids, let's uh, start off our first part of commercial free fun with, uh, yeah! With the commercial! <laughs> Yes, Henri fills my soul also. What can we do to end our malaise? Who can we call? Hey, Chucky baby! Chucky, 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 Chucky! It's the unknown coming! Chucky, 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 Chucky! Wow! Wow is right. America's number one performer is now America's number one action figure. Who can turn a sad sack into a glad sack? Why, the unknown comic can! This is the ultimate toy for your favorite girl or boy. The Baron of Buffoonery, the King of Comedy, the unknown comic! Hey, Chucky Baby, Chucky Baby! <clears throat> Who is that masked man? He's no masked man, Dad! He's the unknown comic! <laughs> yeah! <laughs> now, have fun! Boy, oh boy, it's a Mormon's toy! <laughs> anyway, kids, let's take us a little trip down memory lane right now, and, and we'll visit to our old friend, Lawrence Fishbird III. But you better know him as uh, Cuckoo the Cuckoo. Hey, hi, hello, Rama kids. Hello, Rama kids. What's the word, Cuckoo Bird? Mormet says you better read a letter, Jackie, or you're fired. Fired! Okay, no problem. I can read the letter. <laughs> so you block it. Fired! <laughs> I heard you the first time. <laughs> So anyway, kids, I, uh, first letter comes to us from, uh, from Houston, Texas. It reads, Dear Jackie, I have seen Hellorama only on tape because I don't get it. What the hell did you mean by that? Oh, in my city. Uh, I really like your show, but why can't I see it on TV? Signed, Anna Maria Alberghetti. Well, Anna, the answer is very, very simple. It's because no one in your city likes you. If you want to send us a letter, here's our address. And if you want to send us an email, here's our address. A happy little detour on the information superhighway. Superhighway. <laughs> you said it, Cuckoo. Well, anyway, uh, for our deprived little cutie, uh, here's a, a little something that you can't see in most towns. Hi, I'm Rowena, and this is my friend Daisy. Gosh, we had a busy day, didn't we, Daisy? Bow wow. We went to Mr. Huff and Puff's store. We took a ride on the magic bicycle to Alphabet Land. Arf, arf. We played with the Buzzy Wuzzies in Pippity Poppity Park. <sighs> I hope I'm not forgetting anything, Daisy. Initiate dog noise. Oh, silly me. How could I forget? Daisy and I also went to the rendering plant in Playtime Fun Place. It really is oh so wonderful how almost every part of a buzzy wuzzy gets used for something. <sighs> I don't know about you, Daisy, but I'm really, really tired. I think I'm going to go to bed. Error, error. Ooh, I can't sleep on this bed, Daisy. It's uncomfortable, and it's much too small.
see two of my favorite movies at the mall, Fried Green Tomatoes and The Onion Field. Sounds like a nice mix. Say, whatever happened to that audition you went to? Oh, you mean for the part in my favorite Shakespeare play, Julius Caesar Salad? I didn't get it. The director said I didn't belong in it. What a sour pickle he was. That's too bad. Well, gotta go. You know what they say. No work and no play. Make Bob a dill boy. Uh-huh. Ah, uh, I'm gonna devour you. Eat your jaw. Tear your head away. Get big teeth out. I'm gonna eat your face off. I'm gonna eat your good teeth. I'm gonna devour you. Get your ass up here. Steve's gonna burn. I'm gonna try to start going. Zowie, kids. Wasn't that a good time? Vegetables and violence, they form a creamy coleslaw of sure fun. But let's go to our next letter. It's from my hometown of Squamish, Washington. It reads, Dear Jackie, So after all these years, you're still doing this crap. But I guess working in the world of ungrateful children suits you. I am so sorry your mother didn't let me drown you at birth. Sign your reluctant father, Jim Spratlin. The meanest man alive! Well, well. Here you are at the day nursery. Never been here before, have you? These boys and girls depend on this United Fund agency for their daytime care and their daytime food, too. They have parents, but the parents must work. And here's where they get protective and supervised care. You wouldn't take the food out of these youngsters' mouths like you took away that old man's coat at the Salvation Army, would you? Or would you? More videos, Snapcase! More videos! Videos, 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 happy videos, videos, happy videos, happy videos, happy happy videos, Are you hearing strange voices in your head? Hello, nice people! Ethereal sounds echoing through the caverns of your skull? Hello, nice people! Well, stop worrying. There's nothing wrong with you. You're just experiencing the awesome wonder of the amazing Leander, the psychic ventriloquist. Hello, nice people. The amazing Leander, the sixth sensation. The amazing Leander, master of mental mischief. The man who throws his boys like a boomerang from an aboriginal straight into your skull. He's Gene Dixon, Kreskin, and Edgar Bergen, all rolled into one. The astounding, 
astonishing, amazing, Leander. Hello, nice people. He has enthralled audiences from coast to coast, and now he brings his own brand of vocal magic to the Lou Kaufman Memorial Arena and Discount Emporium. This is entertainment. This is excitement. This is Leander. Satan is my bowling partner. Blood and soul for the father of lies. Kneel before the king of... Ah, I mean, hello, nice people. The Fortean Times calls Leander the psychic Tom Jones. Yuri Geller, he says Leander is the scanner of comedy. Nostradamus predicted, I have seen the future of ESP Entertainment. And his name, it's Leander. And Charles Manson cries, stop the voices, man. Please stop the voices. See him, feel him, experience the power of Leander. Appearing February 30th through the 31st. Obey! You must obey! Resistance is futile! Nice people! Leander is in your mind! <laughs> Hippocrates around the world they are finding. Hippocrates, his hope is not legally binding. His word is not his bond, of bidding he is fond. He can bend the truth and then change his word again. Hippocrates, no, don't you dare call him a liar. Hippocrates, oh, as you will feel his fire. Denouncement in his eyes, confusion in his thighs. Recanting in his heart, denial in every part of the mighty Hippocrates. In the early days of Greek civilization, there were those who taught that truth and honesty were the noblest of virtues, the highest of ideals, the loftiest of exemplary behavior. Thankfully for modern man, there was one being who had the strength to shatter such ridiculous notions. He was the mighty Hippocrates. All this violence! Hippocrates, what do you have to say for yourself? I'm sorry, I was listening to my muscles. Were you saying something? Hippocrates, did you or did you not beat up those innocent humans? All service, it wasn't me. How can you say that, Hippocrates? This is you right here. I really don't think so. Hippocrates, this is the mirror of truth. It cannot lie. Are you sure? It may be broken. Such sanctimony. How can you wrap your tongue around such moral lassitude? It ain't easy, brother. I, I mean, uh, come on, Ulcerus, they deserved it. Humans are always mouthing off against the gods. So I use my might against those that would besmirch and tarnish the eternal glory that is Olympus. And, and that's the truth. If this is so, go to Earth and show us the proof. Go, Hippocrates. Proof to us that the humans take our name in vain. Go, for the honor of Olympus. Mm, whatever. Opeola, goddess of kickback, grant me the moolah to bribe my way out of this. <clears throat> Unless I can find a patsy to take the fall and fast. Hello. Doom, doomy doom. -doo. I, Benedictus of the Charity Monks, must hurry, for my muse has charged me to get this bag of treasure to the Temple of Vestal Virgins before sundown. Ah, a sucker. By my beard, I am blessed. You are the noble Hippocrates. What brings you here? Hail, Benedictus, thou generous yet feeble mortal. As a god, I have come for my tribute, so cough it up. But I am a humble druid, and these wares are meant for the Vestal Virgins. Besides, I don't even subscribe to your theology. What? You would deny the son of Zeus and by association blaspheme all of Olympus? Hey! I didn't say that. You're putting words into my mouth. Now you accuse me of the sin of ventriloquism. How dare you mock us so? If all the Olympians are like you, they deserve to be mocked. Uh, oh, yeah? Well, my god ate your god. Well, my god disemboweled your god to get out of your god. Th then I say you are a Cretan, and all the Cretans are Cretans too. Them's fighting words. Just what I was hoping for. Now it's time to minister the Hippocratic Oath. I, Hippocrates, am here to kick ass and chew gum, and they haven't invented gum yet. Oh, Donnie Brookus, god of the Milu, bless my mighty fist! Ouchies! Oh, ow, ow, nice guy! Set my spleen on the ground! Oh, I'm swallowed! Well done, Hippocrates. You pulverized that blasphemer and have again proven yourself worthy of the gods. Teach the heathens however thou wilt. Until we have need of you again, Farewell. And now to the temple of those Vestal Virgins. 
<laughs> wax paper daddy? I don't like the wax paper daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe, you're back! Uh, this flask <laughs> contains medicine uh, that I use strictly for medicinal purposes. <laughs> Vapor action. Uh, let's go to our uh, uh, next letter, shall we? Uh, ooh, thank you, Cuckoo. Uh, Money, this is a, an official letter. I wonder who it's from. Uh, well, then, the letter reads, uh, Dear Mr. Spratlin, Although my lawyers are, are still investigating the legality of our supposed arrangement and the possibility of its annulment, please find enclosed your monthly alimony check. Enjoy your blood money. Here's wishing you a long and painful death. Yours sincerely, Elizabeth Taylor. Ah, uh, Liz, still trying to deny the truth of our love. Why, our affair at the Betty Ford Clinic was the stuff of legend. Too bad you were unconscious at the time. Oh, those halcyon days. Why, I was on halcyon four or five days. <laughs> oh, memories. It's a good thing you don't have them. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> Zowie, let's go to our, our next letter. Uh, oh, here it is. Mm, thank you. And, Dear Jackie, look behind you. Uh, uh, gee, kids, it looks like we're uh, having a visit from our hopefully friendly mailman, uh, Mr. Moody. <laughs> gee, Mr. Moody, uh, how's, it, how's it hanging? Funny you should mention hanging, Spratlin. Do you know they hang people who deliver mail who aren't Mailmen? Mail fraud is a crime. Punishable by death. No, it isn't. Maybe it should be. Ah! Hi, kids. It's your old friend, Mr. Moody, here to remind you that the first American Post Office was created by Benjamin Franklin, who also discovered electricity. So, by default, Electronic mail or email belongs to us, and we won our cut. Also, for a quick energy rush, the uh, glue on the back of stamps makes a low-calorie, high-powered way to start your day. And at 33 cents, it's a lot cheaper buzz than Twinkies. Where are you going, bird boy? The whole mail thing was his idea. He's lying. I swear to God. Uh, 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 I'm going my way. Uh, 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 I'm an endangered animal. Uh, oh my spleen. Well, uh, while Cuckoo the Cuckoo learns a little something about thinking fast, let's go to some educational shorts. <laughs> Punch him in the throat. Uh, stop. The amazing theme of this amusement park is an entire world inhabited only by old people. And of course, since such a place only exists in our imaginations, the park is actually filled with lifelike androids that act like senior citizens. The scientific name for them is Geriatronic, Easy Effort, Zero Efficiency, Robot Systems, or Geezers. Say it with me. Geezers! Geezers! That's gee golly great! <laughs> the robots at Six Flags over old people are a lot better than those silly old Hall of Presidents at Disney World. These geezers are a splendid, fabulous mixture of animatronics. 
and what our brainy scientist friends call recombinant DNA. Like I always say, DNA is A-OK. -okay. So they look just like real mom moms and pop pops. These senile cyborgs have been built with a multi-titanium battle chassis covered by an ill-fitting layer of wrinkly, stinkly synthetic skin. Compared to real human beings, they are superior in every way, except for their poor vision, bad hearing, and oddly fragile hip bones. <laughs> Observe them grazing, zipping around in little cars, swinging a stick at the ground, dancing, swinging sticks at the ground, shopping, and yes, even more delightful stick swinging. <laughs> and Taurus can interact with the geezers. Here we see people swimming with them. Good thing they have false teeth, eh kids? <laughs> even more wicky-wacky, every mechanical grampy is programmed to talk your ear off with hundreds of endearing phrases. What a cute little girl you are. <laughs> have a gingerbread cookie. Why doesn't your daddy visit me anymore? They were so lifelike that no matter how many times I called them robots, these metallic marvels insisted they were human beings. <laughs> and that's when the cybernetic security guards led me to the exit. So as we wave bye-bye to Six Flags over old people, I salute our rheumatic robotic friends. In their own way, these ancient androids taught Air Connie much about what it means to be a human being. If I ever grow old, I hope I remember what it is to be a geezer. Abraham Lincoln was born in a modest log cabin to honest, hard-working folk in the great Midwest state of Kentucky. Though just a boy, his proud parents knew there was something special about the lad. The future president grew as tall as a mighty oak and as fast as a silverback trout. As a youth, it seemed his head was always in the clouds. Why, by the time he was 18, he was over 92 feet in height. When Lincoln was elected to the most powerful office in the land, he stood a full 700 feet tall. Each of the president's fingers were the size of a Seminole Indian. And with his mighty hands, he cut a swath across the South crushing any who dared incur his wrath during the Civil War. Flying over the battlefields of Appomattox and Gettysburg, the ebon-clad Goliath swooped down over the doomed Confederates, scorching them with death beams from his eyes that set the very air on fire. With Ulysses S. Grant, Guiding him from Lincoln's top hat control room, the days of the gray coats were numbered. But our beloved savior was not to know personal peace. Sir example, Tyrannosaurus. Met his maker on April 14th, 1865, at the Ford Theater. Here he was slain no. by Southern spy and Martian hitman John Wilkes Booth. The fallen leader's massive body was covered in a secret mixture of concrete and voodoo herbs and laid to rest in what we now know as the Lincoln Memorial. But fear not, little ones, for if ever the threat of Confederate Martian separatism rears its ugly head, Abraham Lincoln shall rise again. Next time, Benjamin Franklin, Rogue Cyborg. The Dolphin, sleek, beautiful, denizen of the deep, the Dolphin. Perhaps closer to us in intelligence than any other creature. The Dolphin, Einstein of the oceans, Socrates of the seas. Man has placed the Dolphin into captivity. But was it right to take these convivial cavorters away from the natural environment? Let us take a look at one such dolphin. Derek, a resident of Aqua World in Miami, Florida. Derek shares an apartment with Roger, one of his trainers. Play ball. 
It's that time of year again. Good catch, Derek. Ouch! That must have been Roger's fastball. Of course, the important thing to remember is that our smooth skin cetacean is a thinking and feeling creature like ourselves. And as such, deserves to be treated with the respect and dignity we would want ourselves. Derek has made many human friends. And perhaps it is only through such interactions that the species of the world can truly learn to share the space of the big blue marble we call Earth. Attaboy, Derek. As we bid farewell to the wily wisp of the waves, we ask, a life in the ocean or one living with humans? Is one more right than the other? Perhaps it is not for us to judge. Or perhaps it is. Ah, gee, kids, I guess I have to get my own mail now. Ah, well, our next letter comes to us from Anytown, USA. And it reads, Dear, Dear Frank, Frankie, I am an average, average girl, girl or boy whose enjoyment, whose enjoyment of, programming of programming is enhanced by proliferation of commercials. Advertisements are to be bringing joy to my bleak life. <gasps> Please to be showing commercials so that I can be buying things from the wonderful people at Generico and their subsidiaries. Signed, Signed average, average boy, boy or, girl. or girl who is not Elia Moramets. Well, after that endorsement, let's have some more endorsements. Yeah. Jesus, guys, as subtle as a baboon with a jackhammer. Yup! Ah! Horace Greedy and his psychic monkey Neville are attacking our road to enlightenment! What can we do? Who can we call? Call it Fighting Buddha! A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step to your local toy store! Begin the adventure of disincarnation with the action figure without peer. If you've got a Yen Vazen, then Fighting Food is your man. He comes complete with Inner Peace Battle Chopper, Eternal Harmony Assault Cannon, and the new Karma Wheel of Death. Can I rub his belly for luck? No way. This ain't no pansy good luck prophet. This is. Fighting Buddha. Doo -doo. No other toy works with your child to fill his mind with wonder and infuse his soul with oneness. But, as the holy man says, you can't make an omelet without breaking some legs! Here is some knuckles to sing you to Nirvana, oh material one. I'll, I'll get you in the next incarnation, Buddha! Now, have fun! Time has run out for Whitehead Joe. There's a hunt out for Whitehead Joe. Stop us flying in his copter, yo. Gonna bag him up, Whitehead Joe. Time to retreat, Whitehead Joe. Best to beat feet, Whitehead Joe. Tables turn, hey, what do you know? I done bag me up, Whitehead Joe. Mustafa's Million Man Militia comes with everything you see here. White man sold separately. Sue! Hey, bananas! Who's got the hankering for a big old breakfast? We do, we do! Well, so do I. 
Hey, Billy Ferguson! Hi, Mr. Spratlin! Are you ready for a great new taste from those neato folks from Blixteen's? You betcha, sir! What's on the menu? Why, it's Blixteen's Sugar Frosted Beef Flakes! Sounds cool, sir, but what are they? Why, Billy, Sugar Frosted Beef Flakes are Big toasted flakes of corn, soaked in beef broth, lightly sprinkled with bits of rendered beer, and coated with a glazed shell of pure cane sugar. <laughs> How about trying some beer? Sorry, sir. You see, I'm an Orthodox Jew. And I can't mix meat with dairy products. Of course you can't. Well, in that case, I guess I'd better try some. <laughs> Whoa, don't forget the milk, sir. Wow, look at that gravy. <laughs> Oh, the color! Hmm. I wonder what gives it this power-packed taste. Well, let's find out, Mr. Spratlin. It must be the calcified calf spleen with the hydrogenated bull scrotum. What's it like, Mr. Spratlin? It's delicious! So remember, kids, for the power pack taste of that action pack Saturday morning, don't be a coward. Try Plexidine's Sugar Frost and Beef Flakes. Plexidine's, where flavor is a matter of taste. It also comes in liver flavor. <laughs> Look, I didn't know that they were going to be showing that Beef Flakes fiasco. Well, I don't care if the kids like watching it. That thing almost gave me another nervous breakdown and it kept me on the pot for a week. My butt was wetter than a candy ass baboon. I don't care if the camera's on. Hi, kids. Sorry about that. It just... Oh, old Uncle Jack is just a little testy. What with the whole situation, uh, having given him a whole situation and everything. Let's go to the mail. Mm. First letter's from Smallville, Kansas. And it reads, Hey, Jackie, I heard that the Bee Flakes commercial caused you to have a nervous breakdown. Is that true? Signed, Little Clark Kent. Go, oh, Clark. No, it's not true. It's it's an unfounded rumor. Let's uh, move on, shall we, to the next letter. And the letter reads, Dear Jackie, are you over your nervous breakdown yet? Sign, little Kimmy Hart. Kimmy, 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 there's, there's no nervous breakdown. That's an unfounded rumor. Let's go on to the next letter. And it reads, Hey, Mr. Kid Show Man. I understand that there is an actual surveillance camera footage of your nervous breakdown. Can we see it? Sign Tony Micronesia. Look. There is no nervous breakdown. There's no footage of any nervous breakdown. And if there was, well, we wouldn't show it to you. So roll the tape. Roll the tape. No! no! Paybacks is a bit. I'm
break, Ralph. <laughs> yeah, Ralph. You're not allowed to leave the office during your coffee break, Ralph. Is he, Chris? <laughs> the building can only be vacated at lunchtime, Ralph. <laughs> he probably went to see his psychiatrist. Need a psychiatrist anymore? I want the chicken! <gasps> you can all go to hell now. You can all kiss my ass with your uh, cheap office politics and your cheap backstabbing. I don't need it anymore. I don't need the personal vendettas and the clicky little in crowds I never was part of anyway. I will no longer have to contribute money to another collection because Demi's cat has to have an operation now. <coughs> now. Ah! I will no longer be responsible for your whining insecurities and sideways glances. Calm down, Ralph. Don't you patronize me, George. Don't you patronize me. You with your yearly pool parties and your dysfunctional son and your clingy wife, who, by the way, is having an affair with Chris. But you won't say anything to Chris, will you, George? Oh, no. Because Chris is the boss. Chris is Lord God Almighty here. Who would ever dare stand up to Chris? Not you, Debbie. Not you. Every chance you get, you're adjusting your pantyhose around Chris. You're cornering him by the coffee machine. You're pouting because you think it makes you look sexy. Well, I hope you're very happy together because you both have bad breath. But why am I getting so upset? I don't need this anymore. I don't need your appraisals of my work performance. I don't need your arrogant approvals. And I don't need this boring, humdrum, brain-numbing job anymore because I won the chicken. I won the chicken! I love you, Ralph. Of course you love me. I won the chicken. But you wouldn't entertain me three months ago when I first asked you out. I even bought a new shirt just in the hope that you would say yes, you bitch. But I knew when I won the chicken, all that would change. I knew when I won the chicken, all your attitudes would change towards me. Oh, shut it. Because at last, life is going to be sweet because I won the chicken. I feel like chicken tonight. Like chicken tonight, cause I want the chicken. You know what I mean. I do little turn with the chicken. Back up the music, the fantasy up, 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 up the raw poultry polka. So, you want to play hardball, huh? Well, I have a special letter that I want to share with you. And it reads, Dear Jackie, You are my favorite performer in the whole world, with the possible exception of Tony Randall. But you need to teach the ingrates that surround you a lesson. I want you to hurt them with an audio-visual assault the likes of which they have never seen. So, Jack Tecumseh Spratlin, star of stage, screen, and radio, unleash upon them the power and the fury of the one called Cobra Boy. Sign. Jackie Spratlin. Hardball. Pure brass. Roll it.
kids. Your ears stopped bleeding yet? Good. Anyway, that's our video special. Be sure to tune in next season for another great adventure with Hello Rama. Hello Rama. <laughs> Hello Rama. Hello Rama. Um, Mr. Moody, Mr. Mormat, uh, hello? <laughs> Cuckoo, that's pretty funny. <laughs> How about letting me out? Uh, that's okay, I'll need you. I've got my little collection of this. I'm just out! You little southern freak! Let me out! 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 Yeah. Hey, hi, and welcome to Hello Rama. What the hell is Hello Rama, you ask? Why it's the kids show where fun and laughter go on forever after. It's also a trip through the Stygian underworld of children's programming with Jackie Spratlin. Jackie, a high-strung kids show host at a low-down TV station returns from a restful vacation to find the station and his life turned upside down when the network is purchased by Russian TV producer and left communist Ilya Mormon. It's good to be back in your country for the first time. Sucked into this vortex with him are many strange and bizarre characters like his puppet pal, Cuckoo the Cuckoo. They're turning on you, Jackie, like wild dogs, like wild dogs. Stop exaggerating. Our trippy dippy travel hostess, Air Connie, taking us to places like Six Flags Over Old People. These senile cyborgs have been built with a multi-titanium battle chassis covered by an ill-fitting layer of wrinkly, stinkly synthetic skin. The time-traveling history buff, Commodore Schmidlap. Flying over the battlefields of Appomattox and Gettysburg, the ebon-clad Goliath swooped down over the doomed Confederates. Next time, Benjamin Franklin, rogue cyborg. Mr. Moody the Postman. I swear, if I wasn't afraid of losing my pension, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd crush your head like a fine grape. I'd make a fine jelly. Out of the puppy parts. And many others. As Jackie always says, the fun never stops. Never, dear. And how right he is. On Hellorama, you'll see films like The Mighty Hippocrates. And shameless product placement like Sugar Frosted Beef Flakes. <laughs> This and a whole lot more await you in the magical world of Hello Rama.
So, if you like the show, then pony up the dough. This has been an Iron in Our Thighs production.